Hello there, my name is Doc Conrad, and this is my little preamble to the podcast. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who is a part of this podcast, including all the guests and the two wonderful artists who helped bring this podcast to life. At Meloscav, at M-E-L-O-S-C-A-V, create the icon for this podcast, and at Doida Flower, at D-O-I-D-U-H. F-L-O-W-E-R is the artist behind the visuals on YouTube and other social media sites. If you'd like to keep up to date with the show, follow the show on Twitter at Comms Open Podcast. For the second episode of Commissions Open, I interview my best friend, Kai Laura. She's a talented artist, actress, voice actress, and someone who has personally inspired me to work on my own voice acting and this podcast. We bounce around from topic to topic, including portions where we discuss the freelance industry and even talk about Casting Call Club, where we gave an idea for the site that got implemented not even a week after recording. Please give her a follow, at Kyalora on Twitter. That's K-A-I-Y-A-L-O-R-A. And as always, thank you so much for listening to the second episode of Commissions Open. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Commissions Open, pod interview podcast all about art in the digital age. You can hear the processes, stories, and lives of artists, voice actors, video creators, editors, musicians, and many other talented creators in the era of online work. I am your host, Doc Conrad, and today is my wonderful best friend in the oh. whole world, Kyle oh. Laura. Oh, is that me? That is you. Oh, I somehow lost grip on like my identity as a whole for a minute there. Hello. That's unfortunate. But hopefully you'll get it back because we're talking all about you today. Oh, oh, that's that's a lot. Yeah, it is. Well, that's okay. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know Kaya Laura, which is unfortunately a lot of you, which I hope to remedy <laughs> right now. Oh no. Kaya is uh, one of my closest friends I've met online, and she is a wonderful artist. And now, more and more so, a uh, wonderful voice actress. And you've been getting more and more into that as well. I got you into Fiverr. Um, yeah, you did. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I misjudged Fiverr. Yeah. Should we start there? I don't know where Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Like, well, well um, uh, I don't know. I, I, let's go ahead and start with, let's go ahead and start with all the way back um, a little bit. You've... You do okay. art, and you do voice yes. acting work as well. Um, let's go ahead and start off with this. How did you get into, uh, like, just art itself? Like, like how did you, oh, you go ahead man. and get started with art? All right. Shout out to uh, the Warrior Cats community, because oh. I'm going to talk a lot about those battle cats. Oh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um. I, 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 we have a... <laughs> I have a screen, there's a screenshot that I'm showing right now where I state that I am uh, uh, <laughs> looking up what, what a battle cat is, but <laughs> why don't you, you, no. you're, you're the most qualified one here, so go for All it. All right, so Warrior Cats, or just Warriors, um, is a book series, a hugely expansive book, ser book series, um, all about feral cats who, like, live in these little separate clans and they, you know, try to survive with or without each other. It's usually with each other. Um, so, like, a lot of it is aimed towards, like, you know, younger people. And I started reading Warriors when I was in, like, what, fifth grade? And I, I just kept reading, reading, reading. And these cats were, like, such a big part of my heart because I just loved them and grew so attached to them. And this was around the time I started getting more into, like, the online world. And so, of course, like, the first website I really got my claws into was... Oh, no, oh claws. My, you, you, <laughs> I love this. You're, 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 you're doing puns and you don't even mean oh, to. Oh, no. Oh, it, that's, that's me. Um, <laughs> no, but, like, I, I started, like, going on YouTube and... Um, there were a there's a lot of like creative potential for like warriors people make like amvs they just do regular speed paints of like drawing the cats and scenes and stuff and i got really into that and there was a little series that a group of people made 
called like SSS Warrior Cats or Triple S. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but they kind of, it was almost like anime styled and they were trying to like recreate at least the first book. It only had like, what, like nine episodes, but it, they were amazing to me. And I got into like the forums and that's where I really started like drawing because I started drawing Warrior Cats. Mm-hmm. And uh, that hasn't really changed. I'm still drawing Warrior Cats. I'm 21. <laughs> I will say, but yeah. it, you you draw them very well. You you all right? So in in the books, they have general descriptions of the cats, but like the fan oh, yeah. community has like the fan community is basically like, oh yeah, this is what they look like. Yeah, basically there there's like there's a lot <laughs> there's there's a lot, yeah. but um like just, a lot like, of the books all right, they all right. they have like these these descriptions where like oh this is like a tabby cat with like orange eyes, and you're like yeah okay, but then like. The fandom gets real creative with it because they're like, okay, we have like 50 tabby cats. How are we going to make them look like actual characters? And they've really gotten really cool with the designs. And everyone has their own interpretation of what these characters look like. And it's so cool. Mm-hmm. Ah! The, the series is still going on, right? Like in some, in oh, some yeah. capacity. It's, it's still going. I there... thought it ended like two arcs ago. But oh. apparently not. It's still going. So you really gotten into that. You said in fifth grade you started reading, and then you got into the online yeah. scene a while back. Got into the forums. Yeah. Um, you've also have like a lot of a lot of your work has been like fan creations. I'm guessing. Oh yeah. Mostly of that. Yeah, pretty much. Um, like most of what I do is like fan art centered. Like I do have other things that I draw, but like a lot of it is centered around just things I like. Mm-hmm. And you also have like original characters and stuff like that. Oh, a lot yeah. of a lot of a lot of artists do. <clears throat> um, yeah, no, like when I was younger, I had like a hardcore like YouTube furry phase, mm. where like everyone drew like their characters that were usually cats or wolves, and they all kind of looked like beans, and they were yeah. just kind of like lip syncing to songs and doing <laughs> wacky things, and like that was the animation community, and it was amazing. You had a you had a different YouTube experience than I did, at least in the early part. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> because I didn't have the because I wasn't the creative kind of person I didn't have the early animated YouTube but I had the early oh. gamer YouTube I had like oh. Minecraft let's plays yeah and, and everything like that like that was my niche you had the animation one and it's interesting to hear about that side of like YouTube I'm guessing they did like a lot of redraws and reanimates of like popular media uh I mean not necessarily there was. For a while, for, like, a good chunk of time, maybe, like, a few years, there was a lot of, um, like, kind of comedic animations where they would draw their OCs and just have them, like, lip sync to, like, funny scenes from, like, movies or shows, and they'd be, like, mm. applying their own characters to that. And mm. that was fun. That was a nice time. I... No one was hating each other at that <laughs> point. <laughs> I, I vaguely have, like, I don't know, maybe it was because when I started doing YouTube, there was some guy who subscribed to me, and then I watched his videos, oh. and he has oh. something similar like that. Yeah. That's really wholesome. I like that. Yeah, that's how like, that's how I oh. uh, first started. But this isn't about me. Don't try to don't try to oh, interrupt yeah. my dirty no, laundry of me being like nine to making relate. YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> I hated uh, myself I, making that. But anyway, I feel I feel that mm. quite a bit <laughs> because back <laughs> when I was like a horrible artist, mm. like I'm talking like real bad. I made YouTube videos, <laughs> and, like, I started, this was when I was, like, 11 years old, mm-hmm. and I made these terrible drawings of, like, like, you know, like little warrior cats, <laughs> and I drew, like, a favorite character, and I, I straight up, in Windows Movie Maker, I started out saying, like, hey, this is this character from the books. I like it. I think I did okay. Uh, please enjoy it with, like, one of those Movie Maker slides, and then I just, like faded into the drawing with like some music in the background and that's what i would do how how, many, how long were these videos like only a few minutes i'm like they, barely a minute right they were like 10 seconds they were so oh, short all youtube has, oh. has got that effect on people of just oh, yeah. like i want to post something and it's like it's like yeah go and that's the yeah, no, that was, like, the Wild West of mm-hmm. online content. Because, mm-hmm. like, no one really had, like, a formula that they were doing for YouTube. 
Like, yeah. I mean, of course, there was, like, Equals 3, and that, yes. that was, like, one of the big boys of YouTube that, you know, during that time. Yeah. And, like, that was kind of a formula that that they had and they had set. But, like, during that time, it was, like, I don't know, you could just put whatever you wanted on YouTube, and then oh, that was it. You just yeah. put it on there. Yeah, it's it, it somehow got views, or it just didn't. That's basically mm-hmm. all that Yep, and that's where my videos were. Yeah. <laughs> they just didn't. No, but um, <laughs> there is, uh, it's interesting to go ahead and point that out because, all right, I'm going to go, this is going to be a, a, sm- a slight different tangent involving like early content creation because I fine. feel like, I feel like equals three, you brought it up, oh. reminds me of, how do I put this? Equals 3 is basically the content curator, was a content curator of the internet, where he would just find funny videos that all of us people were just like, ha, put it on internet. Hit button, hit send, (laughs) upload, go. And he would like, here you go. Here's the stupid ones or the funny ones or like the, oh, God, these people got hurt. Like, that was his format? Yeah. It was like like pre-Tosh.0. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was like... Like, it, this is a, okay. It, it was like it was like a granddaddy react channel, basically. That and he was he was basically a granddaddy react channel. Like America's Funniest Home Videos is the exact same thing as oh, Equals man. Three, but not syndicated and a lot more like really inappropriate humor. Like oh some yeah, of the like he way said. off color. Yeah, way off color humor. Uh, but that's oh, no. like that's like that's like a. I'm getting way too off topic, but that's like an interesting thing to ever think about. Like equals three was just er, was just like edgy. Equals three was well, a Tosh pioneer. Point o, Tosh point oh is just edgy America's funniest home videos, but so oh, is absolutely. So is so is uh, equals three. That's basically what I was I'm saying. Like in it was a it was way. like America's funniest home videos, like Internet Edition. Yeah, that's that's basically what it was. Um, that's where a lot of people found critical. It was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's where I found critical. Oh wow. I I oh, totally wow. I totally I totally forgot about equals three like like what I've learned from what I've watched from him other than your other than this project is canceled aka your favorite Martian <laughs> <laughs> this project has been terminated <laughs> <laughs> yeah. permanent hiatus uh, okay back to you because you're the artist oh, no. and you are amazing I want to talk oh, no. more about you because you're also my best friend um, <laughs> so that's how you got started on uh, creating art. Um, yeah. What is your what is your what is your like what is your mindset for going ahead and creating art these days? I know you've you you said beforehand that you're oh. more into the voice acting stuff, but when when you're when you're thinking about creating a piece, what is uh what 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 goes through your head? Wow. Okay. Um, because like like I mentioned before, we really started. Um, because I've been doing voice acting so much that my art has just kind of fallen to the wayside, which is disappointing to me, and I'm trying to get back into drawing. Um, mm-hmm. I just, like, I I look at these, like, general aesthetics that I think are really, really cool, and they really speak, they speak to my soul. And, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that makes my heart do happy emote, so I'm going to, like, try and capture the essence of that and just kind of, like, do it. Or, like, the general attitude of a character. Like, it's very vague concepts, and I'm like, yes, I'm going to make that a thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, okay. inspiration is hard to come by sometimes i think i'm i've just kind of gotten into a funk lately mm. but like i don't know like sometimes you just kind of get these bursts of inspiration you hear like a bardic song and you're like yes i'm going to draw my entire D party <laughs> it's just stuff like uh, that <laughs> speaking of uh i had k oh. I, I had k on last episode and yes, i'm gonna have like three k. i'm having three fourths of the of my D party in my uh in, in my uh, in my podcast and and one person from my other D and D campaign who does character who does uh, character so uh, creation, um, but it's uh, huh I, I've I, I know the I know that inspiration has been like one of the big things you say that like a lot of it has been um, music related. I mean, like, like music has music is basically like a part of people as a whole like i i think that you can't not get some sort of inspiration whether it's emotional or creative from music 
mm-hmm. and I just happen to listen to a lot of music. Yeah. So I get I get like a lot of the general ideas in my head when I listen to music because I'm yeah. like, yeah, this gives me like a somber vibe. I'll draw someone just kind of like sitting down, reading a book, looking pensive. I don't know. <laughs> You, um, I almost, I almost forgot to go ahead and mention, which is one of the most important things. Um, you've also done acting and community theater, and that's how you got oh, more yeah. into the voice acting side. Yeah, um, I, I do, I am involved in community theater. Um, I started doing theater when I was, I think, like sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I just really liked doing it. I saw characters that did stuff, and I said, I want to do that stuff too. um like i'm actually in a production right now that uh rehearsals are starting in like 10 days and i need to be off book by then and it's it's wild but yeah no like i think theater is such a cool experience to have like if you have the opportunity to get into theater i highly recommend it like even if you don't think you're good at it like they i'm sure they'll find a use for you somewhere (laughs) I will be lighting. Yes, I am a great actor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, you've done, uh, can you go ahead and list off some of the, uh, various productions oh. you've done? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to say it right now. High school productions count and no okay. one can tell me otherwise. You cannot change my mind. For that certain. is theater experience no matter what. For certain. Um, so starting from like school productions, uh, the first one that I did, I was in eighth grade, and we did a production of Willy Wonka, which was really cool. This was um, a pretty well-funded school, um, and the theater, like, people that were, like, the administrators of it had have actually gone on to do, like, an independent theater group, which I think is really cool. Mm. Um, I played a Mrs. Gloop, which is, like, Augustus Gloop's mother. <laughs> so I had to do, like, this really... Just ridiculous German accent, um, which I will not demonstrate oh, before you. you ask. <laughs> uh, I appreciate. Um, I appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sparing me. No, however, however, that did make a comeback like a few years later when I was a senior, and we did a production of Happy Holland Days, which is a British comedy Christmas play, mm. and I played Vilma Hassenpfeffer. <laughs> Who's just, she's just were like an angry chef. Were you were you were typecasted as the German? Basically, <laughs> um, I, I okay. I wasn't typecast because this was a different school. Mm. But like, I did the voice during the auditions, and they were like, "Yeah, we can't not cast you as this role because like no one else can do it." <laughs> so there's actually been a lot where I've been kind of pigeonholed a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. We did Shrek the Musical when I was a senior. And I kind of got cornered <laughs> into playing Dragon. And Dragon has, like, this big musical number, and that's about it. And um, I think it's because the the girl who played Fiona, she is amazing, and I love her. Um, her singing style is a lot more classical. Mm-hmm. And my singing style is a little more contemporary, <laughs> not really classical. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dragon's song was very classical. And so I think why I got Dragon instead of, like, say, Fiona, because I think we we were generally on, like, a similar level of skill, Mm -hmm. is just because um, there were different needs for each role, and she fit that one better. Uh, Just stuff like that, you know? Like, it's... You you get what you are needed for. Okay. All right. So that was um, your... That was high school. That was was all high school. And you've done done some other work outside of high school as well. Yes. You've done uh, Mary Poppins. I did. Yeah. um, Before Mary Poppins, I did Beauty and the Beast. Um, Mm. I played a fork. (laughs) (laughs) No, I was... (laughs) Oh, my God. No, I was... Me? I was general, like... (laughs) Ooh, I'm I'm a fork. No, I was, like, general, general ensemble... Um, I also played one of, like, Gaston's groupies, and that was fun. But um, after that, we did Enchanted April in between Beauty and the Beast and Mary Poppins, and I was cast as Lottie, who is, like, the lead character. And that was great. That felt really good because I felt like, oh, man, I'm really not good enough to be doing this outside of high school if I'm just general ensemble, but... 
that was me being super biased because I was like, mm, if I'm not a lead role, then I suck. But like, mm. everyone in the ensemble was amazing. Yeah. Uh, that, that, so like I was just being stupid. <laughs> no, that, that's the that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that like yeah the leads are like very important mm-hmm. and impactful, but the story's not there if you don't have like yeah, the rest no, of the crew. Like the rest of the cast is honestly like the backbone of the entire production. If you don't mm-hmm. have a solid ensemble, you don't have a show. No. But after Enchanted April, where I got cast as Lottie, I was cast as Mary Poppins, which was really cool. Um. Mm-hmm. She's really fun to play. You just kind of get to be real sassy. Oh, I think yes. that, I, I think that's perfect for you. You're, you, 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 I know, <laughs> oh, really? knowing you, I know that I know you'd work well with that. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so you've done, uh, you've done, you, you, you've been an artist. You have done acting, and you've also gotten more and more into voice acting. Yes. Where did you go ahead and get started with uh, specifically oh. voice acting? I love that, like, my origin story for every, like, creative outlet is just, like, because I liked something else. All oh, right. No, no, a lot of people like that. <laughs> no, no, I know. I'm not, I'm not like, discounting that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had, starting in, I want to say, eighth grade, a hardcore Homestuck phase. I'm talking, like, major homestuck phase. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. oh, it hurts We're because <laughs> I did, too. Go on. Uh-huh. Yeah, we both know about so. this, but anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, I saw Octopimp videos <gasps> where... You yeah, too. I know. I, I love too. Octopimp so much. I'm oh. so happy that he's become so well-known because yes. he's amazing. He is. I... So, like... I was watching a lot of Octopimp videos, and I saw people, like, joining in with Octopimp and, like, doing these voices for Homestuck characters. And I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. And, like, one of the bigger criticisms that I got during, like, my younger self doing school productions was that, like, my stage presence wasn't really too great. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um... Because, like, I didn't know at the time, but I have, like, super bad anxiety, so I, I'm not great in front of people. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but everybody was like, oh, man, like, the emotion in your voice is really good. Like, your your voice is great. And so it was like, huh, these people get to do voice acting. Maybe I can do voice acting. And so I, like, read off homestuck pages with like different characters and I'm like yeah here's my interpretation of these voices and someone commented on like my deviant art or something and they were like oh man I really love your Vriska voice or someone said like oh man you're like my headcanon Nepeta voice and I'm like oh oh wow I can like actually capture characters with just my voice how uh, amazing is that uh, <laughs> it was just like a real like good moment for me that is excellent I've I, I've had similar cases where I've, I've like, early on, I literally read things in different voices and I listened to Octopimp mm-hmm. and I've, I've been, I had the similar journey of just like, <laughs> I love, I love his, his work, it being a fan yeah. creation initially and then moving yeah. on, all that, uh, it was, it like, was great. And I, I, before we move on, I have one other thing to say about Octopimp <laughs> and this okay. is just a story because in high Ooh. school, I told my friend that I loved the work, I loved his work, and mm-hmm. she was so snobby. She was like an elitist what? Homestuck fan and said, oh, you have no. him as your head can? <laughs> and I was oh, like, and, and me and her got into an argument over just like, it's still good, just because it's popular. Like, I had that. <laughs> That's had actually that such a good, like, thing to open. Like, it is so easy to become, like, a gatekeeper for something that you like. Mm-hmm. Because, like, doing voice acting, I, I had friends that were like, oh, maybe I can do voice acting. And I'm like, pff, pff, I don't know, maybe. Maybe you can do voice acting. I don't know. And I was like, wait, hold on. You're literally not better than anyone. Stop. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, it's so easy to get like that. Yeah. And, and a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of what, uh, a lot of people think that voice acting is, like, incredibly... Like, they they think it's e they think it's easy just because it's they don't have easy. to go ahead and show the emotion of, of the face. Yeah, no, uh, like, 
there's there is like a big difference between like physically acting and voice acting because mm-hmm. like and each have their own merits. Yes. And you have to have a specific set of skills for each one. Like to do physical acting, you have to have the stage presence, you have to have like the physical ability to do everything. Like you need to be able to capture that character with your whole body and be able to sell it right. And with voice acting, you have to be able to do all of that, like capture an entire character with just your voice. Mm-hmm. And like each side of that is, like, it requires a lot of you. Neither mm-hmm. of it is easy. Yeah, I've I, have you done the have you done the voice acting uh, thing where you you actually like move your hands and like do the different facial structures when <laughs> you do the you voice something? acting? Yeah. <laughs> I was just doing that when I was talking. <laughs> Good. Good. I've, I, that is something that like a lot of people don't realize if they're not in the voice acting community. If you are someone who does that, a lot of what I end up doing if like if I want to get an ang- if I want to get like an angry or like more of a deeper like sinister tone, yeah. I like move my fists and I scrunch yeah. up my face and like I get I get that physical self, but I have mm-hmm. to like express it further in the voice. It is yeah, because you have to like summon that energy really sell it. That sounded so like <laughs> oh, that sounded interesting, but it works. So whatever. <laughs> We we may sound pretentious, however, however, <laughs> we care not. This is our this is our jobs. Because it's oh. our show and not yeah. yours. Yeah. Sorry, that was a that right. That was a reference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, no, but like, I do that when I draw too. Like, if I'm drawing a certain facial expression, I will unconsciously make the same face that I'm trying to draw. Mm-hmm. It's it's really like you get into it. Mm. It, it it comes to like the emotional connection of making the artwork that you yeah. want to have and how the body it's almost actually, like an extension of yourself yeah your your body your body expresses the way that you feel even if you're ex- even if you're expressing it in a way that mm-hmm. doesn't have to be physical and that's why i'm a terrible liar <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> what do you have to lie no I'm um i I, I don't lie, that's why, because I'm really <laughs> bad at it. <laughs> so, like, every time I've told you, like, a thing that you've done is really good, you know I'm telling the truth, because, like, I cannot lie. Hopefully. I I might, I don't know how good I am at lying. I know that I can't oh, control, I, can only, I know I can't control the level of my voice, like, as much. I have, I've always had issues where people tell me, like, I'm always, like, over speaking. Like, I was awful at whispering in class. I don't know, it's just something something weird I've had. Um, but anyway, that, that's, that's just, like a thing with some people though. Like some yeah. people just have voices that carry. Yeah. I'm a care. I'm a it's carrier. like, I have a friend like that. Yeah. His name's, like he... uh, his, his name's Doc Conrad. <laughs> no, no. His <laughs> name is Matthew and I love him dearly. Mm-hmm. Um, but like he, the, the man cannot whisper. Mm. Like he will be talking at his lowest possible volume and we can still hear him from like the other side of the room. Like it's, it's a thing. Yeah. And he's aware of it. Like he knows he can't whisper. So like he doesn't really try. (laughs) Okay. So back on, back on task, we've talked about your, uh, we've talked about your art, your your history of art um, and how you got into that. We talked about your act, about acting and how you got into it originally from high school and theater and we talked about your voice acting, how you found it through mostly like fan YouTube creations, and the big one being Octopimp and his Homestuck series. Um, yes. What specifically got you into the commissioning part of uh, doing the work that you do now? Like, like what, oh, what was man. The, what, what 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 got it, you into that? It almost happened like naturally progressed into that. Um, like it started with um, doing pieces for DeviantArt points, which is, the points are DeviantArt currency, for those who don't know. And it just kind of, like, went into, like, oh, hey, like, people actually make a living doing art. Like, maybe I can try making money off art. Like, not that, like, money was the main goal. No. no. But, like, someone, someone told me that, like, if you're willing to put in so much work for for like so much time so much effort and like so much energy into doing something like why not like why not try and make a career out of it like it's clearly something you love doing Mm -hmm. it's something you work hard at like there's no shame in that yeah 
there is a lot of different creators who feel somewhat ashamed of taking like the money that they earn uh, from yeah, like, like creative outlets because that's they, the thing you earn it. Yeah, they they earn it, and the the worst the worst thing about it is they feel like guilty for it, which they shouldn't, because they are putting forth an exuberant amount of effort into the mm. the the skill that you want to do, and it and it's and, and personally, it's not sullied by it, it's it's not like ruined by ta- accepting payment for it. I don't think no. that should ever be the case. And I think, like, a lot of people can get into that sort of mindset where, like, they're made to feel bad for, like, making a living, mm-hmm. which is super wild because, like, nobody nobody goes and... Okay, I'm not going to say nobody because I know someone somewhere definitely has, but, like, normal circumstances... Like, nobody will go up to, like, like a retail worker and just be like, how dare you take money for this? How mm-hmm. dare you do this? No. And, like, because art is a luxury item, people have weird attitudes about it. Yeah. The, a lot of people don't consider it to be, especially the creation thereof, to be art. Uh, not, not art, yeah. apologies. They don't consider it to be um, a job. They don't. Yeah. Get, yeah, and I know you. This is a topic you want to go ahead and discuss because Ooh. you've Ooh. you've had you've, like, you've you've had people <laughs> who tell you that. Look, uh, luckily, I I am fortunate enough to have family who are understanding in like that. But I, of course, I have a part time job as well. Um, but mm. like in terms that of that helps. Like, yeah, that helps. But in terms of like doing this as a job, you consider it to be full. Mm. You consider it to be a job, correct? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, it's a job. Hmm. Like, um, I had, I still kind of have some family members that they're, they're kind of like under the assumption that like, I don't work, Mm -hmm. but I, I very much do. I I work very hard pretty much every day. Um, just because like, I'm not getting in my car and going somewhere to like stand and do something for a long time. They're like, oh yeah, you're not working. You're just at home. I am just in my house. <laughs> I am just sitting here <laughs> in my computer chair. Yeah, but mm-hmm. like, you don't have to be doing like manual labor to be working. No, no, and a lot of a lot of people understand that. That's like, it's, and and I don't know what your specific like, your specific way of working really is in terms of like. Um, <laughs> I haven't. I've never really gone gone in in detail of like asking you like, hey, what is it that you do for your like work? Like, what what is it that you do? Do you like answer like emails? Do you like go out and commission like find find places to like apply to like do commission work? I, I've never heard heard what specifically you do, and I'd love to hear about that. Well, <laughs> a lot of um, when I say that like I'm working, it's. I'm actively like doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of um, a lot of the process though is like networking or answering emails, messages. Like my phone went off earlier. I just got a message on Fiverr, so I have to like get to that at some point. Yeah. Um, like a, a lot of it is like you don't have to be actively doing the thing to be doing your job, mm-hmm. because like a lot of it is working with clients. Um, I had to like sit and negotiate with someone about a commission for quite some time before like I actually was able to get down and do the thing Mm -hmm. so a lot of it's just stuff like that like talking to people and especially when you have things that like you are offering a luxury item that someone may or may not want a lot of it's kind of like selling it to them where like they're coming to you for a commission because like I, I don't go out of my way and be like hey buy my art Mm -hmm. (laughs) like people come to you and they're like hey like I have something that I want done I think maybe you'd be able to do it and then you talk to them about like your process what you do um, Mm -hmm. the kinds of things you are able or willing to do and you go from there Mm -hmm. so a lot of it's just that a lot of it's like working with clients okay have um, this is an interesting question have you ever uh, transferred any of your like work over to a physical medium like in terms of, like, showing off uh, art that you've done in print form to other people? Oh, man. I have not made, like, an official print before, no. Um, Mm -hmm. 
my my artwork is pretty much all digital. Um, okay. I do have like physical sketchbooks that I do stuff in. Um, I've done a lot of tradition. I have done a lot of traditional art, um, like in school when I didn't really have the setup that I have now. So I I had like physical art to show people. Mm-hmm. Voice acting is one of the weirder mediums oh, in terms yeah. of commission work, and I think Fiverr has been one where people have come to you people have come to you yeah um it's and that's super, like a lot really different cool. than what the normal uh before fiverr a lot of that was like applying places and like doing yes. casting as well very much um i did a lot i still do a lot on casting call club mm-hmm. and i don't know like i have a different mentality when i'm on casting call club aside from like f- say fiverr because um, what CCC does, um, they have, you know, the project that someone wants voice actors for or animators, artists, whatever. And you, you go down, they put some lines down for you to read and you record them and you put them up and then you're like pitted against everyone else, like Mm -hmm. auditioning for this role. And I don't know, like it almost rubs me the wrong way because like you, you can like physically see like the other people who want this too and you're like oh no like this is intimidating Mm -hmm. um especially with like the upvote system like i kind of don't like the upvote system yeah i'm I'm, i remember responding to a to a tweet of yours that you made there was (laughs) yeah it it, the upvote system is one of the most polarizing things because yes because i've the first time i ever uploaded to cast and call club I was auditioning for the role of this guy named of, of this of this uh, of, of a, like a comic dub uh, mm-hmm. for a for a character named Lord I believe Lord Devil and uh, my my uh, my post got the like a lot of upvotes and I'm like oh my god people really mm-hmm. like me I was so yeah. I was like I was ecstatic and I didn't get the part and I was like what the hell what happened but then I realized yeah. like but then I realized like oh yeah they have no say in what the actual commissioner and the artist wants from the from like the production so it was just more like a pat on the back for like good job buddy yeah that was really i like i can definitely see that like and i i'm not gonna say that i don't get like a nice little little crumb of serotonin whenever somebody like upvotes my audition but Mm -hmm. like oh i don't know what 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 oh no no you're i was gonna get to your point where like i remember reading about it that like people don't people don't apply when they see one with a lot of upvotes. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's a thing. Yeah. Um I I did it once or twice where like I saw someone with like 50 upvotes and I'm like, "Yeah, maybe maybe I'll I'll leave it to them." But like that's so bad for me because like what if the person in charge of the project thought that I could do it better? Um mm-hmm. and now I'll never know. Yeah. But I don't know, like I, I just have a lot of feelings mm-hmm. about the upvote system, yeah. and like I, it's hard to put them into words, because like it feels it feels good to have people tell you that like they liked your thing, mm-hmm. but it's also like it it gets you in into kind of a spiral. At least for me, when like you do get a lot of upvotes and then you don't get something, and you're like, oh well, I mean that was meaningless. I guess it doesn't matter, yeah. Yeah. and then you just get sad. <laughs> There should be what what I feel that the um, I don't know. This is ju- this is just like this is just one guy's opinion, but the the yeah. idea of the upvote system is good for like an individual to realize how good they are. Mm. However, it should not be public to what everyone sees. Yeah. So I think that every time I they apply, they could then you could see like this many people upvoted your thing. That be like, oh, cool. That mm-hmm. means a lot of f- that means like this individual listened to it and liked it a lot, and what it yeah. shows for everyone else is just the is just the audition and no mm-hmm. upvote or no nothing. Yeah, I I think that'd be really helpful for a lot of like new voice actors, who get like easily intimidated by people who have a lot of upvotes. Like just having that just not visible to the public would be really cool. Yeah, and, and and it would still give the the same sort of like boost of like oh these people enjoyed my enjoyed the work when they listened to it and they gave it an upvote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for the gold kind stranger. Like, <laughs> upvotes to the left. Upvotes to the left. Um, but not you can't see them. No, 
No, you can't see them. Well, <laughs> just hit the button. Do not, do not look. Do not see. Um, okay. So we've talked about th- – those are some of the main points I want to talk about, especially your your um, opinions on Cast and Call Club and your yeah. – um, and also your thoughts about, like, uh, commission-based work compared to, like, an actual job. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, you said it. What? You said compared to an actual job. Quote, unquote. I'm talking, I'm <laughs> okay, t- speak, I was like. I'm <gasps> speaking as a boomer, all right? Hey, listen, Almost listen. Almost caught you slipping. What you mean? What you mean? <laughs> I, listen, I'd much rather do, I'd much rather do this <laughs> than take out the trash for 15 hours a week oh, that yeah. I already do. So yeah, uh, no, I'm I'm just giving you a hard time. Oh, I know. I'm, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm having the hardest time right now. This is so. Oh no! <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, speaking of uh, sending, speaking of bad times, let's go oh, ahead and oh, talk oh, about no. let's talk about some clients that you've had bad times with. No <sighs> names, but like. Yeah. Okay, no. Of course not. So. Beforehand, we were talking about the Nerd City video, which talks a lot about mm-hmm. the commission-based artists, especially physical artists, um, that are that they have a, they have like they asked each of the artists a question of what is your what is your dream client and your nightmare client, and I yeah. want to know that I want to know like examples you've had of like bad ones that you've had and what you can what what the people at home can learn from that. Okay, <laughs> so I mean. I, I feel like every artist has an experience like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I had someone... This this happened to me a couple times, and I think every artist will have had this happen to them, or it will happen to them at some point, where someone comes up, and they'll be like, oh, wow, I love your art so much. Your art's so good, whether that be, like, the, the physical art or the voice acting or whatever, and they're like, mm-hmm. wow, your art is so good, and I love it, and I would love to have your art done for me and then you're like oh yeah that's cool awesome like here here are my rates like here's and then they'll be like oh well I don't have any money to pay you because because of xyz tragic thing that has just happened and so like could you do it for free slash exposure Mm. (laughs) I'll give you a shout out on my YouTube video that gets 30 views (sighs) like See, I feel like this and is the like, biggest call out because I'm literally like this is a, this interview process no! is literally the biggest shout out I could ever do. No, because like no, cuz like I I wanted to do this and wasn't expecting this to be like a job. Yeah. That's this true. was a thing that I wanted to do with my best friend for funsies. <laughs> but like but when they come up to you and ask you to do your job for free for them, like that's a little but that's not exactly a client. But I'm still going to extend on this a little bit because, like, the next thing that happens, Mm -hmm. they explain this, like, tragic backstory that they have. And, like, my whole clan was was killed by my brother Itachi and, like, the only (laughs) thing that makes me happy is art. And then you'll be like, oh, well, I'm sorry, but, like, I got to pay bills. Like, I got to eat. And then they'll be like, oh, well, your art sucks anyway. I hate your art. I didn't want it anyway. Bye. And it's like, okay. (laughs) Like, why bother? No, they're, yeah. I don't don't even know. And I've I've luckily never been, um, and I think that mostly comes from, like, this isn't a strictly artist perspective, but mostly from, like, in a physical art of... Mm -hmm. I like the thing because I saw the thing and I want and I thought about it and I want it like this. <laughs> and so yeah. like get, can I have thing please? <laughs> give me please. Give me please. Please give. Gra- grabby hands. <laughs> yeah, basically. And like I get that. Mm-hmm. Um when I was like 11, I saw like a Ooh, going back to battle cats. Um <laughs> I saw like a warrior speed paint and I really really liked it. And it was this very popular artist. And I, like, this was back when you could still message people on YouTube. Yeah. And I messaged them. I didn't ask if they had, like, requests open or commissions open. Requests were a big thing back then because, like, Mm -hmm. it was at least where I was in the sphere of the internet. We were all pretty young and, like, didn't know what making a career out of art was. Yeah. So, like, a a lot of it was requests. 
So I messaged them, didn't see if anything was open, and I was like, hey, I has a requesal. I said that. I really said that. Oh, I'm proud of you. And then, I, and then I, like, gave this whole description of what I wanted, and they came back, and they were like, hi, um, my requests are closed right now. I'm sorry. But you know what I didn't do? What? I didn't, like, immediately verbally abuse them. I was just <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Queen, queen, queen. <laughs> Not immediately uh, abusing so artists, queen. <laughs> the Absolute. bar is so low. Oh. Oh. oh, this is what I can excel in, is not being a terrible person. I mean, like, some people can't even do that, so you're going pretty well, far. You're right. Let's say. You are correct. Um, no, that that is, I, I think that, um, <clears throat> I think it's very true. Because there is mm-hmm. a part of the, there's a part of the, there's a part of the, like, internet that had that sort of mentality of, like, yeah. free thing, go. And then, like, <laughs> free, I want free thing, please give to me, thank. And that was, that was, like, a thing for a while, but that time oh, has yeah. since passed, and a lot of people have realized yeah. that, like, in, in, in that sort of, like, I don't know, in the sort of, like, growing of the industry, a lot of the people who made things for, like, who who made different things and wanted to show off that work and sometimes even took requests and made them for free are now, like, they need money and they need it for expenses. We've got to have money. It is very good that you have things to help you eat and live and breathe. Mm Mm-hmm. I do like to survive. Yeah, and I don't. I don't. I don't think some people realize that that uh, surviving is not a luxury. Mm. Like art is a luxury. Survival is not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, no. Like that's that wasn't exactly like a client though. So I'm sorry that I gave you like a non-answer. Oh no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm. I'm. That's definitely been a thing. Uh, mm. But I'd love to go in here specifically about one, like 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 okay. clients you've uh, like like a client ex- an example of a client without naming names <clears throat> that you've had and you're just like don't do what this person did and here's why. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there was someone who commissioned me for like an NSFW piece, and I was like, okay, yeah, um, that's something that I'm relatively comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's within my comfort zone. I can do that. Yeah. When I was drawing it, I would send them, you know, regular updates. Like, here's what the sketch looks like. Here's how it's going so far. Let me know what you think. And, like, every time I would send it to them, they would be like, yeah, uh, I'm going to need you to, like, rework the entire thing. (laughs) And, like, not to say that you're not entitled to having the thing done how you want it. Mm -hmm. But, like, say... Say it was like, okay, I want my character, like, sitting on a bench eating ice cream. And I was like, all right. So I drew the character sitting on the bench eating ice cream. And I sent it to him. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to need you actually to have them, like, on stage doing a Broadway musical. Like, it's stuff mm-hmm. like that where, like, they just keep <sighs> wanting you to give them something completely different every time. Or if you give them what they want and then they're, like, very, very critical of it. And it's like... It sounds like you just kind of don't like my art, dude. Do you want to, mm. like, maybe cancel this commission? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. There, It's going back to that video that, that we both saw. The compliment sandwich really helps. Yes. The com- very much. The compliment sandwich of stating the parts that you like, the part you want changed, and then ending with the thing with, like, loving the art in general. Like, yeah, you, like you do you're, that, you're you can obligated, get whatever you want. like. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, like on on one hand, like, you're not obligated to, like, tell someone that you love something if you don't. Mm-hmm. But, like, have a little tact. Yeah. And it's, it's like, especially if you commissioned like it. Like, you're li- this is literally them saying, like, I love your art so much that I want mine. But you yeah, I, I want I want you to do your art and I'll give you money for like making something near and dear to me. Yeah. But with your art, like that's that's the mentality that a lot of people have. And then they're like, Oh, actually you're tacky and I hate you. No, I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't get it. <laughs> like that guy. Like that. I was telling you about that guy like two weeks ago that came to me for voice acting mm-hmm. and 
and I sent him like the voice sample and he was immediately like, I have a few questions. Oh. I was like, okay. Oh, <laughs> like, man. um, I heard this, this, and that. Is that really gonna be in like your final work? And I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. it was just a sample. Yeah, there I don't even know. <laughs> so in terms of in for, in terms of like voice acting, there is there is there's a there's a big discrepancy in terms of a a person who wants to go ahead and hire it for their own individual thing and like having the um having it be like a this is just just something that I want to go ahead and make and I want to go ahead and have this be for like a personal pri- passion project or mm-hmm. whatever and I get like having wanting to have the the like the specific details and whatever um yeah. and, and it's it, it is important but you have to like realize that there is there is some there there is some like it's a it's a it's a two-way street buddy like yeah you gotta, like you're yeah. still working with people yeah yeah and, like we're like that's kind of the thing that like I that's my main thing because like everything that I do is so based in like my feelings because mm-hmm. I'm a little baby no, sorry. Um, Stop it. where it's like when people are like super direct and critical with mm-hmm. what I'm providing for them it's like I'm still a person like I'm not an art machine and yeah. like I still did put some love into what I do so like maybe don't be a jerk about it yeah yeah and and I and I will say like I've had the closest experience I've ever had to a client like stating that they want things changed was literally because they were like wanting me to say words in Chinese because it was for a children's story in Chinese like oh, partly boy. in Chinese. So I was like when that happened I was like I am very understanding. I hope they are understanding <laughs> of the situation that I speak no Chinese and I had to learn on the <laughs> I fly. I do not speak Chinese. Yeah, I had to learn on the fly like basic it, it was for a yeah. children's book of like English to Chinese translation. So it mm. was it was saying the the specific words in Chinese and how they said it. And luckily this client was a it was a joy to have because she like actually because oh, she actually like, Hey, I don't know this word and I wanna make sure it's right. Here's some samples that I have and she was like, Okay and then she like as a as a Chinese oh. teacher, like literally voice voice trans like did did her way of pronouncing it and I tried my best oh. to like somewhat match it. Oh, she was a she was a joy. That's so nice. Yeah. I love when people actually want to work with you. Yeah, as opposed to like <laughs> go, go do the thing. No wrong, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> and, and all right, here's us attacking clients right now. Challenge me. Fight me in the ring. If you <laughs> have meet a, me in the pit. If you have a major problem with the commission that you gave and you want to change, it so far you are bad at telling directions. That is what like, happens. Like more often than not, it's because you are bad at telling the directions rather than the artist messing something up. And recognizing that is what's most important. If you have good communication skills in what you want, then it shouldn't be as much of an issue as you're making it out to be. Like, as if the devil needs more advocates. Um, yes. I will. I will attempt to play devil's advocate here. Like, I get. If, like, you want something a very specific way mm-hmm. and someone – and you're, like, giving someone your money to do it. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they give you something that's, you know, suboptimal. Like, yeah, absolutely voice your concerns and be like, oh, actually, I wanted it this way. But, yeah. like, if you're giving them, like, a completely out of left field concept – that like was not at all in the original agreement. Like that's that's on you, bud. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I and I'm more talking about in the extreme cases, like you stated, with like wanting to have one thing and then totally change the artwork to something totally different, and then being mm-hmm. upset with it being totally different, or something along yeah, those lines. Like no, that like, is th- that is bad communication one on one. And having good. I ones read totally like I read a lot of horror stories with artists where like people were doing this and these these artists were so sweet and so nice and they were like oh of course i'm going to like rework this sketch for you and the people were doing it just to get like more art out of them oh wow and yeah like it's so wild that people do that like why why would you do that you're a terrible person yeah i i have no words that that is it, it is <laughs> it is very bad to go ahead and do that especially if um 
like, like trying to game a system like that is just not mm-hmm. going to get you far in like yeah. life in general, I'd say. Especially especially because like nowadays we all kind of have this sense of community mm-hmm. where if someone's been majorly screwed over by a client, they will tell people they know about it. Like word yeah. gets around. Yeah. If you're like scamming artists, like the artists are going to know and they're not going to mm-hmm. work with you. This is the, it's the artist equivalent of, like, taking a bite out of a, taking, like, a good, like, decent amount of bites out of a burger, and then saying that, like, oh, it was wrong, and then getting mm-hmm. a new burger, and then eating that burger. You just got a free burger. Like, doing that, but, like, yeah. the moral, but, like, the moral reprehensibility of, like, totally taking, like, asking for one thing, knowing it's good, but then asking for something different because uh, it's yeah, like trying to just ga- to get an additional thing. Oh, oh, like, ah, it's, it's it really like, it, it's like actually manipulating. <laughs> yeah, because like that artist could be using that time and that energy to work with other clients that actually want their art and mm-hmm. want to like pay for it. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, it really gets me. Yes. Um, we've had a lot of talk about the general concepts of art, but I want to go ahead and get back to mostly, uh, your work because oh. it's still oh. all about you. Um, oh, no. what is, uh, what is some, what is some work as of recent that you are, um, oh. incredibly proud of that you've okay. done? Okay. I'm about to gas up this whole team. So, <laughs> um, one of my first voice acting gigs was a visual novel called Verity's Deceit. It is not out yet um, because we've had a lot of issues with um, the inverse of like people being terrible to artists, but like the artists actually just like scamming our big boss man, which is a bad time Mm -hmm. because they were like using someone else's art and being like, yes, this is mine. And then, Mm -hmm. yeah, basically just taking people's money and not delivering because it wasn't their art in the first place. Huh. Um, but yeah, no, Verity's Deceit, it's really cool. It's It gives major, major Saw vibes, which I quite like. I played a character named Alexis Lake. Um, she was basically like the co- the comic relief character. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that was a lot of fun. Now, my most recent thing is, uh, is an indie game that's being made right now called Psychogenesis. Ooh. And I am voicing one of the or two of the main characters of the game. Um, I get to voice the, like, the player character, Aziel, and he's, like, a little boy, and I get to play um, Nerva, who's basically just, like, talking to him the whole time through, like, a communication system. And in in the words of, like, the script writer and general, like, do-it-all man for the project, it's kind of like Metal Gear and Dishonored, like, had a baby with, like, super cool mind powers and stuff. Like, it's that kind of cool. <laughs> and I'm very excited to see how it turns out. Oh. So you're, I know, I know, it's so cool. It's so interesting that you are not only playing uh, the main character, but also the character who probably talks to <laughs> yeah, the main I'm, character the yeah. most. <laughs> I'm I'm playing like Link and Navi. Like, <laughs> Go to the quest of the like, right here. Like, okay, me. So th- <laughs> yeah, basically, like, um, me and uh, the the big boss man. That's just what I call him. Uh, mm-hmm. His name's Connor. But Connor and I actually talked about like it's it's actually really funny listening back, knowing that it's like the same person basically having a conversation with themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, the main character has, like, kind of a split from himself um, called, I think he's called Scene, but I don't know if it's, like, an extension of himself or something. Like, I don't know everything about the game. Yeah. Um, but, like, I guess I also kind of voice him because he's, like, kind of a split from AZL. And I, I actually got, like, some really nice feedback, like, a couple days ago because Connor had played the audio that I had recorded for Dialogue. Uh, all spliced together to people. And they were like, whoa, that's really cool. All of those actors are great. Because <laughs> they didn't know that it was all just me. <laughs> so this is why I got to gas you up. You're like, oh, you're so uh, good. You're so it felt good. so good to hear. Like, yeah. ah. Yes. And before <laughs> I forget, I don't know how long we've been going, but before. Uh, it's been like an hour, but. It's been it's been about an hour, but it's we didn't start recording for a little bit. But. Yeah. Um, 
I just want to go ahead and state that if you have any specific uh, commissions uh, for this wonderful voice actress and this wonderful <laughs> artist, um, <laughs> Twitter in the description. Uh, Kyle Laura is believes it's Kyle Laura underscore. What, what, what is your Twitter? Is it Kyle? Is it just Kyle Laura? It's just Kyle Laura. It's just Kyle Laura. Um, you can find her on Twitter there. Uh, she draws cats a lot and also kind of a voice I actor, do. so it says. Hey. hey well, that's, what, that's what you're just. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> I know. I don't know what to put there ever. I love it. Um, <laughs> and thank you for shouting out my. Uh, <laughs> thank you for shouting out my podcast by having commissions open in your. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get that plug yeah, in. Yeah, that's a plug. No, um, <laughs> but no, you can go ahead and find her on Fiverr as well as on Twitter. Um, she is every animal. artist is secretly plugging this podcast and somehow, some way. Just <laughs> at just put the at in there. No, no, I, don't take, I'm gonna, I gotta fi- I gotta find the tw- I gotta make the Twitter. I'm gonna make the Twitter tonight. Oh, yes, that's that's yes, what I'm gonna do. do. It. And then I'm gonna go ahead and have it be taken. like uh, just the, the blank image for a little bit. But uh, it's this is all gonna be recorded. This is all recorded in the past. We'll have some more stuff uh, later. But either way, Kaya. Is there anything you want to go ahead and specifically uh, say to the people out there about not only yourself, but like not? It doesn't have to be just about yourself. It could be about whatever you feel about whatever thing. Like, is there anything, any other topic you want to bring up? Um, not really. Anything in particular? Um, hi, I like to do things. Um, you can hire me to do things for you. Yes, yes, please, <laughs> please, hi- please hire Kaya. She is amazing. And I am so grateful for you to go ahead and come on to uh, uh, well, my show. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. This is going to be really great. Like, this whole thing is super cool, and I'm so happy you're doing it. I can't wait for, I can't wait for, like, all these episodes to come out, and you'll be the second one. Yeah. You're going to be episode two, right after K. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll be, I'll be, oh, I love K. <laughs> I love K, too. He's, he's great. Um, he's so good. He's so good. But... <laughs> Thank you so much for everything yeah. you've done and accepting this podcast interview. Thank you. If you want to go ahead and follow her, like I said, at Kaya Laura. And, ah. uh, yeah. I will hopefully go ahead and, uh, see you sometime soon. Take care, Kaya. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Commissions Open. If you would, Please follow this podcast on whatever app you use. I would most definitely appreciate it. If you're just listening, that's perfectly fine. However, if you'd like, you can also watch this podcast on YouTube to see a custom commission every episode for each guest I have on, as well as to see the wonderful podcast set. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at ComsOpenPodcast. That's C-O-M-S Open Podcast on Twitter. Finally, you can follow today's guest, Kaya, on Twitter, at Kaya Laura. That's K-A-I-Y-A-L-O-R-A on Twitter. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.